It's not going to get all of it dirty, just some of it. I'm going to roll around in the mud of ungodliness. I'm going to roll around in the mud of filthiness. There is a separation for purity uh, that it's important that we fill w- what we fill our minds with. It's important what we listen to. It's important what we read. Well, we know it's important to have a pure religion, and James describes exactly what that pure religion is in James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. We've learned that we need to have godly speech, we need to have godly care, and also it's important to be living godly lives. Godly living is extremely important, and we'll be talking about that today. This is a Truth Transforms Truth Nugget. A daily dose of truth for your daily transformation. Welcome back to another Truth Nugget. My name's Adam Markley. We are in the middle of James chapter 1, verses 26 to 27, faith that produces pure religion. We want to make sure that we have a pure religion. That pure religion comes through faith in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. It is through that faith in Christ that produces a transformative work within us. Uh, James, if is James a faith that works, is the title of the series. If you're joining us in the middle of this, there's a playlist down below to catch up. But that is all about the fact that it is a transformative faith. It is a faith that is, yes, in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. And it is a faith that absolutely will be producing good works. Those good works come from the root. They are the fruit that come from the root. And uh, it is something that we see working throughout each and every part of our life. And as we've walked through this book, we've seen it as faith that works in trials. It is a faith that seeks God's wisdom. It is a faith that um, is is pure in speech. It is a faith that, that uh, has all of these different elements of it. There are all of these different things that are important as part of our sanctification. And now we'll continue in our sermon, Faith That Produces Pure religion. If you are new here, I do have a free resource for you, and that is a little ebook entitled Lessons in Philippians. It's something that I hope is helpful during these chaotic times. We're living in some really difficult times and very chaotic times where we have no idea what's around the corner, and it is something that I hope is a helpful reminder to keep our heart and mind focused on Christ. You can pick that up at preachingforgodsglory.org forward slash gift. That's preachingforgodsglory.org forward slash gift. Links are also down there in the description and the pinned comment. Let's take a look at this passage before we dive back into the sermon. James chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. We'll be focusing in on that portion here today, keeping oneself unstained from the world. Let's go ahead and jump into that sermon, and I'll be closing it out with that sermon. Won't be coming back to me, just be... uh, Rolling right into the final prayer, I hope you enjoy. Well, in order for our religion to be pure, it must embody godly speech, godly care, and it must embody godly living. We also find that in verse 27. A religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. To keep oneself unstained from the world. This is the idea of purity. This is the idea of godliness. This is the idea of holiness. Uh, The idea that we need to continue to grow in our walk with the Lord. We need to continue to confess sin and repent of sin and continue to walk in purity. That godliness is a a very important thing. That, That we need to be concerned about godly Living. You know, think about uh, a bride that's getting ready to marry, get, get married, and she's got on a, a beautiful white dress, a very expensive dress, 
uh, white representing purity. And it's before the wedding, and she sees a field of mud, and she needs to go get something. And she just says, yeah, I'll just walk through it. And, and you happen to be there, and you're advising her, do you think that's a good idea? She said, no, it's fine. I'll just walk through it. She said, I, the whole dress is not going to get dirty, okay? Just some of it. He said, I, I really don't think that's a good idea, but she insists that it doesn't seem to bother her. You say, well, something's wrong with this picture. And something's probably wrong with her. He said, well, uh, I, think, <laughs> I think you'd be right. And so how wrong is it for a Christian to have on their pure white dress and say, you know what, uh, I'm going to walk through the mud. It's not going to get all of it dirty, just some of it. I'm going to roll around in the mud of ungodliness. I'm going to roll around in the mud of filthiness. And, and this doesn't necessarily mean that, that they're sitting and doing horrible things. It could just be that they're filling their mind with those kinds of things. It could just mean that, that they're around people that, that think coarse joking is fine. They're around people that make sin casual. They're around people that maybe even glorify sin at times, and they just expose themselves to it and seem to think that that's fine. There's a sense in which there is a separation for purity, uh, that it's important that we fill what we fill our minds with. It's important what we listen to. It's important what we read, whether it be the radio or TV or movies or, or whatever we fill our mind with. It impacts how we think. It impacts how we think, which impacts how we behave. If you have someone that never reads anything of importance because they don't really like to think, they just read superficial things, they just intake superficial things and fill their mind with superficial things, what's that person going to be? They're going to be a superficial person. And, and you have someone that reads far and wide, they read intellectual material, and they, um, uh, it causes them to think deeply. They'll become a deep thinker. Well, if that's true, then why would that not be true with the Christian life? What we fill our minds with matters. And so if we fill our minds with junk, if we fill our minds with anything that glorifies sin to any degree, it's going to affect the way that we think. And if there's anything that we take in, in our minds, that goes down into our hearts, that... Um, doesn't seem to, to take sin seriously, mocks godly values, mocks biblical values, well, that's going to affect not only how you think, it's going to come out in how you, your attitudes and how you behave. Uh, but if we fill our minds with godly teaching, with the Word of God and, and with uh, biblical teaching, then it's going to lead to godly attitudes and godly behavior. Uh, so it's important when we fill our minds with, with. I read a story about a youth pastor who felt the need to read and listen and watch everything the kids in the youth group did, everything they read and listened to and watched. He said, because I need to know what they're exposing themselves to. Uh, I, I need to know how best to teach against it, so I'll go watch it all. And he did that, and he did that for a few years, and then he fell into sin and had to leave the pastorate. James meant what he wrote when he said to keep ourselves unstained from the world. God meant what he said when he said that. And so it does matter what we fill our minds with, and it does matter that we have a biblical outlook on life, on all areas of life. And so we need to be concerned about godly living. How concerned are you to grow in your spiritual walk? If someone were to follow you around all week, would they see a concern for godly living? Would they see humility demonstrated? Would they recognize a heart that desires to learn God's word and live by his word? Would they experience a love for Jesus that is actively lived out? Those are some questions to consider. So how do we grow in godly speech, godly care, and godly living? I would say that first, we need to understand how important it is to God. When we understand how important it is to God, uh, 
then we will speak in a way that is honoring to God. And, and when we speak in a way that is not honoring to God, we will be grieved by it. And I think it's a, it's a good idea to memorize Scripture that will come to mind when we're about to, to speak inappropriately. Uh, because the Holy Spirit will bring Scripture to mind that you have, that you have inside of you. That's why the psalmist prayed that he has stored up God's word in his heart that he might not sin against God. And so it's, I think it's important for us to, to do that. And the more of the word of God we store up in our mind and in our heart, and the more that we'll grow closer to God, the more that we'll grow in uh, not only godly speech, but in godly care, compassion for others, and in a concern for godly living. If we want to have a pure religion, a religion that is pure and undefiled, we need to grow in each of those areas. Our life needs to embody the godly speech, godly care, and godly living that we uh, that it needs to have all of those things. So, let us seek to live in a way that honors God. Let us pray. Father God, we pray that you would help us to grow in, in our life, help us to grow closer to you, help us to draw closer to you at all times. Help us to treasure Christ in such a way that it would truly impact every part of our life so that in every way that we live, in every thought that we have, it would be submitted to you, Lord. And we would grow in godliness. I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.